Hello folks, today is Friday, October 28th, 2022. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that's been going on this week, uh, and also, happy almost Halloween. I know it falls on a Monday this year, bummer, but here to just tell you, I think candy corn is good. Wait, no, don't go. Nah, anyway, let's just get right into the news. Now, the first thing that popped up this week that is interesting, it's just a cool conversation about how games are made. Uh, maybe a little bit of controversy for some people who really like to play the console war game, but not, not really, actually just development in general and the progression of it. So the talk of the town has been that the Xbox Series S, the Xbox Series X is a lower priced, uh, lower resolution cousin, of, you know, less powered, if you will, uh, is actually hindering developments of some games. The conversation started kind of bubbling up last week when a developer behind Gotham Knights uh, did say that the Xbox does serve as kind of a bandwidth for development and kind of kind of hold things back, so to speak. When this developer, Lee Davinald, who's a technical artist, was asked about hardware bottlenecks and the whole Gotham Knights 30 frames per second issue, he said specifically the Xbox Series S GPU is holding things back because multi-platform games need to optimize for the lowest performer. And for next-gen games, in this case, the lowest performer is the Xbox Series S. He even said an entire generation of games is hamstrung by that potato. Damn. I'm gonna link everything I talk about, of course, like always, down in the description below. And specifically, this is from Video Games Chronicle, who breaks down a lot of this conversation really well. Citing people behind Digital Foundry, who said that they've heard from developers that the Series S makes things a pain to work with. But also, Ian McClure, a developer at Bossa, said specifically, it might sound broken, but the reason you're hearing it a lot right now is because many developers have been sitting in meetings for the past year, desperately trying to get Series S launch requirements dropped. Studios have been through one development cycle where Series S turned out to be an albatross around the neck of production. And now that games are firmly being developed with new consoles in mind, teams do not want to repeat that process. On the development side and the SDK side, uh, Microsoft has defended and you know they've said that they've put in the work to make these things easier to develop on. It's also worth pointing out that the Xbox Series S does perform very well. It sells very well in certain particular markets, but the question is, is this something where it's like, pardon my French, uh, shitting or getting off the pot in terms of moving to the next generation? Because on the one hand, for Microsoft, it's a very smart move to sell a lower cost, uh, more affordable console that's slightly underpowered, but still gets you in the door of the next generation. But is it really getting you in the door of the next generation when it could potentially, according to some developers, be holding things back. Look, we, I mean, we talk about Xbox a lot in the news because they try different things where PlayStation and the PlayStation 5, it's a traditional console. It costs a bunch of money. It's powerful. Buy it. Screw you. Uh, it's good, but it's not necessarily the most interesting thing to talk about where Xbox, you have things like them trying Game Pass and stuff like that and trying the Series S and maybe the Series S is causing problems. Xbox Game Pass itself also has been in the news for apparently not quite hitting some of the benchmarks they were hoping, uh, the milestones rather, where they're kind of maxing out subscribers. There's only going to be so many people that are going to subscribe, but now they're apparently working on bolstering uh, the PC game, pa game Pass side of things. I find this stuff interesting as someone who plays on all platforms. I don't really I don't really have a horse in that race. My horse in the race is technically Steam Deck, actually, if, if you want me to be really biased. But I also don't want to pop off and like armchair expert, like I know how to make games or know how any of this stuff really works. But I think it's an interesting conversation, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, even if you're using an Xbox Series S, would love to hear your experience. I've never seen one or used one, believe it or not, despite my job. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you're an, a game developer, you work at a studio, or maybe you're just an amateur fiddling around, what do you think about these constraints uh, and what people are saying? I definitely want to hear from you guys. It's definitely food for thought in terms of just like what is inside these plastic boxes uh, and how they enable games to be made for the next couple of years. Also in other news, uh, CD Projekt Red officially revealed one of their projects. Now you guys probably know a couple weeks back they revealed their entire slate of a bunch of games that they're working on for many, many years and people are either cool, awesome, sweet or people are still mad about uh, cyberpunk uh, so they're skeptical. Either way, we do now know that Canis Majoris, which was the code name for one of their new projects, is actually going to be a remake of the original Witcher. The, the, I know that a lot of people are anti-remakes and stuff like that, but when you look at it for a game that definitely needs it, I, I think this one definitely needs it. I have the least amount of experience with this one, but 
The Witcher 1 is old. It's rough. They were a much smaller studio at the time. They were scrappy. So this is pretty interesting. This is going to be co-developed in tandem with a smaller studio called Fool's Theory. They're kind of like a support studio. They've worked on uh, support stuff with Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, I believe Outriders, Baldur's Gate, stuff like that. And it's going to be in Unreal Engine 5. I think this is interesting because I think in a lot of ways it's like them not wanting to make more Geralt stuff move on to something new, whether it's with Siri or a new school or a new Witcher or whatever, but also can't deny that people just love Geralt himself, can't get enough of him. So this is their way of kind of satisfying those fans. I'm one of those fans. Maybe they're just trying to have their cake and eat it too? I don't know. I think it's really interesting though because it's more uh, traditional Witcher style stuff and the older games were a bit different. I really, really love The Witcher 2. I don't really think that needs a remake. I'm actually curious to see if they could make the first one kind of uh, be like an in-between, kind of bridge the gap between like the tighter focus stuff of The Witcher 2 and the crazy open worldness of The Witcher 3. If this could find its own happy medium, I also think I'm open to it just kind of doing whatever. It can change things from the original Witcher game because I don't really look at that one as like gospel, but I actually think this is interesting. And like I said, remakes, they're everywhere. It's like all we talk about now, but this is where I think one's warranted. I don't know if you agree or disagree, but let me know. Hey, next up, this episode is sponsored by ZipRecruiter. If you're in charge, hiring can be a really challenging process. There's so much pressure to find the right person for the right job and a huge stack of applications. But if you wanna work smart and not hard, ZipRecruiter is quick and simple. It uses powerful tech to actually find and match the right candidates for your job and present them to you automatically. Basically like, hey, look at these people, go for these people, they might be good. You can review and then invite these top candidates to apply for your job and this will actually encourage them to apply directly faster. Believe it or not, a whopping four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Yes, it can be that easy. And it's the number one rated hiring site based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at our exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash GameRanks. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash GameRanks. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Also, I feel like for the last two years with like the pandemic and like everything going on, all we've talked about is game delays, but now I wanna start highlighting more game release dates. And we got another one this week uh, for Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. As a refresher, this is that new action combat kind of one from Team Ninja, so it's probably gonna be good. It's like Neo, but not. Uh, this has a release date of March 3rd, 2023. I'm definitely looking forward to that. It looks really crazy. We're probably gonna have a before you buy on it, so keep your eyes peeled. March is looking pretty stacked for 2023. <laughs> You were thinking you would be burned out on cool games by the holiday season. Seems like we got more right around the corner. Now, next up, a bunch of stuff I linked in the description down below for you to get caught up on. Uh, the first is the God of War Ragnarok launch trailer, because that game is right around the corner. I can't believe it. I can say that I am playing it for review for a uh, before you buy. Can't say anything about the game yet, but... You can watch this trailer, or if you don't want to see anything else about the game and go dark, I like to skip trailers for things I'm really excited for. You know, you do you. I don't really know where I was going with that. Uh, also, in terms of things I forgot but are coming out, like, you know, in the early part of 2023, uh, Forspoken got a new little gameplay trailer breakdown type of thing, if you're curious. And of course, I got to include, because it's Friday and it's dropping, uh, the launch trailer for Bayonetta 3. We're probably gonna have a video out about that. It might be a little late, but we're gonna get something out on that. Uh, it seems like the voice actor drama has kind of subsided if you followed all that stuff. Uh, it sounds like the game's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it at some point once I'm done with everything else I'm playing, but uh, yeah. Also dropping this week, of course, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I just am like this weirdo who plays through all the campaigns since Call of Duty 2. Uh, I, I don't know why, I'm not like big into the multiplayer or anything, but I like stupid crazy campaigns and so we did it before you buy for that. Uh, let me know if you're jumping into the multiplayer and like your rough first impressions because I don't know what to think because I'm not a pro on the multiplayer side. Still, if that's what you're jumping into this week and you're slamming a bunch of Mountain Dew, good luck, have fun, God bless. Also, the Winter's Expansion DLC dude is dropping for Resident Evil Village just in time for Halloween. Uh, you can play it in third person and it's 
pretty cool. Uh, it's a great reason to replay the campaign, actually, and they didn't half-ass it. The Rose stuff is interesting. It's pretty cool. It's not super long, and I don't know if it's like as epic as I was hoping it would be, but it's definitely worth checking out. And the mercenary stuff is there. I don't know, is that mean? I don't know. I'm just like still more of like the glory days of old school Resident Evil mercenaries mode, but hey, that's just me. So there you go. Also, this game went viral. A lot of you guys tagged me in it, uh, especially after I expressed interest of another game that was like body cam footage style. Uh, this is a game now on Steam. Uh, it's apparently by a really, really small development group. It's called Paranormal Tales. This is essentially a first person horror game, body cam footage style in the woods at night, almost Blair Witch Project style. This is right up my alley. I love realistic woods in video games, specifically just kind of like that. Very simple, dry, dead woods that you would see in any old suburb, uh, but this looks really creepy, really atmospheric. It's early. We've been wowed by small development studios before with flashy first looks, but I am definitely keeping my eyes on this one just because this is like, Mm, exactly what I would want from a horror game. Also, just another thing I wanted to share uh, that I saw online, this is a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater roguelite shooter. Uh, this is from Hobocat Games, who has just kind of been sharing little prototype videos of it on social media. And it's essentially like a BMX Tony Hawk's Pro Skater shooter with guns, with blood everywhere. And it's kind of like a little more old school PS1 blocky style graphics. Uh, it seems like it's got like a card system. The combo system essentially makes Makes you stronger, your attacks more powerful, and uh, this is like my type of game. I guys have told, I've told you, that Roller Drome is probably one of my favorite games of the year. That's the type of game. Like if I was given a billion dollars and be like, make your ideal game, it was always for me. Tony Hawk with guns. Roller Drome was cool, but it wasn't gory. This looks gory, and I hope this becomes a real thing and sees the light of day. Also, worth pointing out, just some Resident Evil 4 updates hot off the heels of the crazy gameplay reveal stuff we got last week. Uh, the producer for the game did an interview with PC Gamer. Yoshiaki Hirabayashi said essentially that the game isn't cutting corners, it's not gonna be shorter, and they're not taking out the weird stuff, which was my biggest concern. He said, and I quote, when we started production on Resident Evil 4, we looked into what people thought was good in the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes and what could have been done better. One example is the playtime for Resident Evil 4 is about the same as the original game. He stressed that it was really important to preserve the length of the campaign, but uh, apparently when pressed about just like how things flow in this game where you're faster, you're more capable with the new controllers, is that going to shorten the game at all? Uh, we don't know for sure and again, He's a producer, he's a high level guy, he's trying to sell the game. So I have to see it to believe it, but I can't help but be hopeful. The last trailer we got showed a lot of the weird zany stuff that I wasn't sure if they were gonna put in the game. So I hope they really go all the way because if there's a game that deserves it, it's Resident Evil 4. And to end on another high note, a positive note, this just like headline, this headline crossed my desk and I was very happy about it. Actually kind of surprised. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge dropped a couple months ago. Kind of the old school brawler, but a new game uh, by Dotemu and published by Devolver. It has officially sold over 1 million copies, which is really, really awesome, especially just for someone like me who likes that old school beat em up style experience and they feel like they're going away, especially after putting out videos on my channel uh, about this game and people were like, this game looks like it sucks, the graphics are bad. Like after seeing takes like that, I was like, man, is all hope lost for these types of old school games? Are they going away? Thankfully, it seems like people are still buying them. And you know what? I'm happy about that. I'm not making any money from that. It's literally just a corporation getting that millions and billions of dollars. But if it means I get to play more beat em up style games like Ninja Turtle games, Simpsons games, X-Men games, Streets of Rage games, Final Fight games, uh, blah, 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 Alter Beast, uh, blah, 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 like just give me more of that. I'll take this as a win. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. But that's the gaming news that's been going on this week. It's It's been a weird week for sure. This energy drink is really, really hitting me now as I'm stumbling over my words. But let me know what you're thinking about all the news this week. I'm sure the takes are going to be pretty spicy about the Xbox Series XS stuff, especially if you're rooting for one console team over another. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're more technical minded and you get this stuff. Let me know what your expectations are for the Resident Evil 4 remake. And is is there another game like for you, like Shredder's Revenge, where like you saw it got picked up, it got some popularity, and you're just happy? Like, is there a genre out there, a small subgenre or something that you're rooting for? Let me know. I'd love to hear that. And also, of all the games dropping, whether it's from last week, the week before, Gotham Knights, up until now, Modern Warfare, Bayonetta, 
what are you playing? Are you jumping into one of those this weekend? There's going to be like a, a pinned comment thread. So let us know what you're jumping into for our research purposes. We'd really appreciate it. But this is the Friday show. I'm here every Friday just kind of giving you a roundup of the week of news, some stuff that we found interesting. If you're digging it, all you got to do is click the like button. It legitimately helps us. But that's it. Have a nice weekend. Be safe. Happy Halloween. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me.